on the meal plan today is Mexican style impossible pie. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be cooking up some ground beef. I'm gonna chop up an onion and we're gonna put that with some delicious Mexican flavors. So I just peeled the onion and I'm just gonna put it on my chopper here and we're gonna give it a dice. In a large skillet over medium-high heat, I'm going to add about one tablespoon of some oil. And then to that, we're going to go ahead and add our diced onion. Oh, sizzle. That's what you want to hear. Okay, we're going to soften these onions down. It'll just take about two to three minutes. And then what you want to do is have about one pound of ground beef ready. Okay, my onions are nice and brown and they smell really good. Let's go ahead and add our ground beef. Just going to take my meat chopper. We're going to break this ground beef all up and then we're going to brown it. this is browned up, I'm going to bring it back. My meat is nice and brown. Now what you want to do before we start adding in all of our delicious flavors here is drain it really well because we don't want that grease in our pie. We've got four ounces of some diced green chilies, one can of corn and I drained it. We're going to add that. We're gonna add some taco seasoning. Now, if you have a packet of taco seasoning, you can use that, or you can use a homemade blend, which I have here. And I'm gonna put three tablespoons in. Now, you can make your own taco seasoning if you would like. I'll link the recipe down below to mine, so if you wanna make that, you can. Okay, then we got some hot sauce. Now, you don't have to put this in if you don't want to. We're just gonna dribble just a little dash or two. I'm going to look over there at my husband. Am I doing good? Okay, that's good. I never said okay. <laughs> he wasn't looking. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just mix this really well. You can go ahead and turn your burner off now. Now what's good is you can put some cilantro in here or other kind of flavors that you have. Maybe a little bit of enchilada sauce. Mm, it smells good. It smells wonderful right now. What we're going to do is you want a pie plate. Now this is a nine inch and what you want to do is spray it. Let's see. And then I'm going to take our meat mixture here and we're going to place it inside of our pie plate. So you want to fill this up about halfway. So if you have extra, that's fine. You can put it in your refrigerator and then bring it out and use it for tacos or, you know, something like that. There's always, always something you can use for the extra of this here. We might be able to get it all in there. All right, let's go ahead now and make the non-crust that's going to form the bottom crust. I know, that's the way it is. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and make the batter. So I've got just a medium bowl, and to that we're going to add three quarters cup of some bisquick. Now, when I say bisquick, this is what I'm talking about right here. Now, it's a pancake and baking mix. Now, if you don't have this or you can't find this, I have a recipe for homemade bisquick in my blog, and I'll also link that recipe down below. Okay, to that, we're going to add one and a quarter cups of milk, and then we're gonna put in three eggs. I'm just gonna crack them into a bowl separately. What I'm gonna do now is just add a little bit of salt and pepper, probably about an eighth of a teaspoon each. All right, we're just going to take a whisk and we're going to whisk this up. Now, as long as it's all combined, we're not looking to get every lump out of the batter here, okay? But we do want the milk, the eggs, and that batter to be fairly mixed up together. And that's looking really good. Okay, let's go ahead and bring our meat mixture back over here. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and take one cup of some shredded cheese. Now, I've got some cheddar cheese here. You can use a Mexican blend cheese. You can use Monterey Jack cheese, whatever you want. And we're just going to cover the pie here. All right, now we're going to take our bisquick mixture 
And we're just gonna pour that all on here. What I'm gonna do is just take a sheet pan here and I'm gonna place my pie on top of it. It's ready to go in our oven that's been preheating at 400 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes. Now we're looking for this to be nice and golden brown across the whole top of this pie here. And also, before you pull it out, make sure it's not jiggly in the center, okay? We want a firm set on this. Okay, so I've just pulled this out of the oven at the 30 minute mark. Look how golden brown on the top that is. And there's no jiggle in the center here at all. So what I'm gonna do is allow this to rest for about five minutes or so, and then we're gonna cut a piece. Okay, that's the inside of the pie. I'm gonna try a bite for you. It smells amazing. Oh. Mmm. That crust is formed on the bottom with that bisquick. The bisquick part of it kind of goes down to the bottom and then that cheese goes up to the top and gives it a nice crust. Are you making one? I am going to show you how to make a cheeseburger impossible pie. It's a really easy lunch idea or a dinner idea that you can throw together pretty quickly. Now I'm using bisquick today. It's a really fast way to make the biscuit mixture or I have a recipe on my recipe blog at katherinesplates.com on how to make bisquick and you would only need half of that recipe for this recipe today. So we're going to start off by browning up some ground beef. We're going to use a medium skillet. We can place it on medium high heat. I've got one pound of ground beef. I believe it's a ground chuck. We're gonna start breaking this up. Now you don't want any more than this because this is what will fit into our dish. Now if you wanna double the recipe, you're gonna be making two different impossible pies. While that is browning, we're gonna go ahead and chop up really finely These will soften down, so don't worry about that. We're going to go ahead now and season our ground beef and onion while it's cooking. A little bit of salt, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Some black pepper, again, a quarter of a teaspoon. I like to flavor the layers. Now, once the ground beef is browned and the onion's nice and soft, I'm going to bring it back. Now, you want to take a pie plate. This is a nine inch deep pie plate. I've got one tablespoon of butter. I'm just going to place into the center of it. And then we're going to coat the dish with the butter. It's going to give it some flavor. And that's going to help get the pie out. <laughs> We're going to drain the ground beef and the onion and place it into our pie plate. I'm just using a slotted wooden spoon here. You can use my paper towel trick where you just push the meat off to the side, place some paper towels in there and that will help absorb any excess grease you have. Or you can drain your meat any way that you like. This was very lean meat, so I'm not gonna have a lot of grease in there. Make sure you flatten it down. All right, we gotta get the cheese going for this. I'm gonna be grating eight ounces of 
cheddar cheese. Put it in my cheese grater here. We're going to take our eight ounces of shredded cheese, sprinkle it all over the meat mixture. Now if you want to use different types of cheeses, you can certainly do that. Alright, we're going to set this aside. We're going to go ahead now and make that biscuit mixture for our impossible pie. I'm going to be using half a cup of Bisquick. And like I said at the beginning, if you don't have Bisquick or you can't find it, I have a recipe for it in my recipe blog, katherinesplates.com. You'll just want to half that recipe to use in this recipe. All right. We're going to add one packet of Lipton onion soup mix. Now it comes in a box like this. It's called onion recipe soup and dip mix. So it's a dry mix. We're going to crack two eggs into our bowl. We're going to add one cup milk. Take a whisk and blend this all together. It smells good in there. All right, we're going to pour this all into our pie plate on top of the cheese. Going to spread out the onion mixture here a little bit. Just take a paper towel and just kind of wipe the edge around the edge. My oven is preheated at 400 degrees. We're going to place the Cheeseburger Impossible Pie into the oven for about 25 minutes until it is cooked through nice and golden brown on the top. Now I'm going to place a sheet pan underneath the pie plate just to catch any drippings that may happen. All right, that's what it should look like. Nice and puffy, firm to the touch on the top. We're going to let this rest for about five minutes to kind of pull itself together, cool down just a little bit, and then we're going to give it a try. Sprinkle some green onions on. All right, you see how that firmed up? It took about 15 minutes. It smells delicious. Then I have my piece here, and that looked delicious. Mm. That is really good. I love that onion soup mix in here. Oh, it just gives it such a great flavor. And then you got that layer of cheese. Mmm. That's delicious. You saw how easy that came together. Look how fun that looks. Mmm. A delicious lunch or dinner idea. Chocolate peanut butter impossible pie. Now it's an impossible pie because we're going to have the crust mix inside of the pie batter and it's going to do its magic in your pie plate. So there's only seven ingredients that you're going to need to make this pie. You're going to need some Bisquick. Now I have you covered if you don't have Bisquick. I have a homemade blend right here that I make and I'll show you how to make this here in just a little bit. Or if you have Bisquick in your pantry you can use that. Two eggs. 
You're going to need some unsweetened cocoa powder, brown sugar, peanut butter, milk, and you're going to need some softened butter. You're just going to need a 9 inch pie plate. Okay, we're going to start with a large bowl. I'm going to add the Bisquick mix to the bowl. Now this is half a cup. And for this recipe, let me show you really quick how I make this. You just need a small bowl. I'm going to add in half a cup of all-purpose flour, three quarters teaspoon baking powder, eighth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to put in one tablespoon of butter. I'm just going to take a fork and blend this all together. Now once you get it all combined, it should look like a coarse crumb. And that is fresh Bisquick. I love using homemade Bisquick mix because you know what's in it. I mean, it is four simple ingredients. When you read the back of the box of a Bisquick, you'll see the difference. It's nice and fresh. You can make it anytime you need it. We're going to add in one cup of brown sugar. We're going to pack it. So I'm going to put the measuring spoon in and push down on it until it's solid. And then just scrape off the excess. We're going to add in four tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. There we go. We're going to add in a quarter cup of butter or half a stick. Now you want to make sure that it's softened. One, two, three, four. There we go. We're going to crack in two eggs. I like to just break them into a smaller container and add them. That way we don't have to go digging out any shells. Got one cup of milk. We're going to add in two thirds cup of peanut butter. As easy as that was, all in one bowl, seven ingredients. I'm just going to take an electric hand mixer. I'm going to blend this all together until it's nice and smooth. Make sure you stop it about halfway through the mixing process. Use a spatula, pull down the sides. Smells so delicious. You know what peanut butter and chocolate smells like. Mm. Make sure that it's on medium speed. That way that cocoa powder didn't go flying out at you. Our pie plate now. I'm using a nine inch. It's a deep dish. You now you can either use some butter off of that wrapper or you can use nonstick cooking spray. You want to make sure that you coat the entire pie plate. It's easier to take the butter off of it and then use the butter wrapper. I was going with it backwards. All right, I'm going to go ahead now and put the mixture into our pie plate that we've prepared. A 
Okay, it looks funny, doesn't it? Because there is no pie shell or pie crust in here. So you're going to see that magic happen. Okay, what we're going to do now is preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I want to bake this for about 25 to 30 minutes until it's fully cooked all the way through. And when we pull it out, you're going to see how it has formed a crust. Now, impossible pies are so fun to make. You can make them sweet, like this one here, or you can even do it savory. I've made one Mexican style, so go check that one out. I'll link it down below. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're still here and you want to see the final outcome on this pie here. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way you'll always know when more shows are posted. Okay, I'll be back. We're not waiting a minute longer. I'm going to go ahead and cut into this. Give it a try for you. Now you know this is done. It has pulled away from the sides of the dish. There's my chocolate peanut butter impossible pie. I'm going to take a bite for you. Okay, which piece is mine? Well, this one's mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, here's my piece right here, and here's my bite. I'll let them look at that one. <laughs> Mm, oh my goodness. That's creamy in there. Mm. I like that subtleness of the crust that it made. There's definitely some chocolate going on. Oh, and it's so smooth. All right, y'all, make this one. <laughs> Who's making this one? Y'all give me a thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way you'll always know when shows like this one here are posted. I'll see y'all on my next episode.